Hello, welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, York's Chris Weekly. And in this week's episode, I'm going to talk to you about overwintering practically everything that's grown in most exotic gardens. So, overwintering plants, plenty of videos out there. I've done overwintering plant videos for most individual types of plants. But in this video, I'm gonna bring pretty much all that together and go through the different types of plants and how to overwinter them without excessive amount of energy use. Because as we know, the cost of electricity, cost of gas has gone through the roof and to heat a greenhouse is getting more and more expensive. And for a lot of people, heating a greenhouse will be too much this winter and have to find other strategies to get plants through winter. So this video is looking about looking at keeping plants alive throughout winter without using too much energy in the form of heating a greenhouse. So with that being said, let's on with the video. So the first type of plant we're going to talk about are bananas. So we've got Musa Baju. If you're growing Musa Baju, it's pretty hard. You can leave it in the ground and that's what I would do, especially this year with the cost of heating. I wouldn't think about, you know, trying to dig it up and bring it in over winter. And I wouldn't do that in normal years either. You can, if you've got a small potted plant, try to keep that frost free. So if you can bring that indoors, that's fine. But it doesn't need a heated greenhouse. As long as it's frost free right by the house or you know, in a cool area like a shed or a porch or something like that, it would be fine. It doesn't need too much light over winter because it's not particularly growing. But generally speaking, when we talk about Musa Baju, the hardy banana, it's fine in the ground as long as it's established for a season and it'll come back year after year. You can wrap it up in straw to protect the pseudostem or you can let it die back to the ground. The choice is yours and I've done videos of how to overwinter Musa Baju and I'll do a link in the corner and the description below. The next type of banana is Musa Tichimensis. This is slightly more tender than Musa Baju. So for some people you can treat it in exactly the same way and wrap it up or you can dig it up. And I found if you dig it up, as long as it's kept frost free, it's fine over winter. So you don't need excessive heat to keep this in growth over winter. So you don't need it in a, a warm greenhouse. You can literally dig it up and you can bring it into um, a carport or next to a porch or indoors if you wish, but it doesn't need heat. Like I said, it just needs to be kept ideally frost free so the pot's not freezing through and the stem's not freezing through. So near a house or under some cover should be fine for most people or wrap it up like Musabaju and hopefully it will get through. The next type of banana or banana like plant is the onset banana. This is a tender plant and I've done many many videos about onsets over the years. How to overwinter them, either dry storing or digging them up. One thing you can't really do for 99% of us is leave it in the ground. So this is one plant you have to protect in winter. So digging it up, treating it as a house plant if you've got the room or you could dry store it. And that is what I'm going to do with mine this year. I've done plenty of dry storing videos. Again, the links in the description and in the corner. Basic premise is you get the banana plant, you dig it up, you chop off all the foliage, you chop off pretty much all the roots, you wash off all the compost, you turn it upside down, you dry it out for a few days outside to get rid of all the moisture, you turn it the right way up and then you continue the drying process somewhere completely dry, so inside a building and then when it's nice and dry you can put it in a attic, you can put it in a cupboard in your house, you can store it in a cool room in your house. It needs to be frost free and ideally really over five, six degrees, ideally over 10 degrees. So that is what I will do with my, I'll dry start my onset bananas and you're not having to use a warm greenhouse to keep it going over winter. Other type of bananas you might grow, other types of onsets or other types of musa are going to be tender and you will need to bring them in. So you're gonna to have to really treat them as house plants, but most people stick with the basics in terms of the Musa Baju Sycamensis and Onset, so we'll not worry too much about the more speciality type of banana plants. Next type of plant is aloes, and aloes are tender-ish on the whole, so for most people and most types, they need to be brought in, and most people will grow them in pots. So if you grow them in pots, you can bring them by the house, or you can bring them into the cold greenhouse, 
or you can treat them as a house plant if they're small enough and you can manage it and bring it into the house on the windowsill. They don't want to freeze through. They've, most have got some tolerance to, for light frost, but they don't want to freeze through. They will go to mush quite easily in a lot of cases. Some aloes have got a bit of hardiness to them, so aloe, astrata, can be left outside in the ground in many gardens in the UK. Alastritula can be left out, that's the hardiest type, and that will be fine in the ground. But on the whole, most are tender and you need to bring them in. A plant a bit like aloes are agaves, and agaves, most are half hardy, the ones at least most people grow. So you can chant it outside with a rain shelter over the top. Some are hardy, such as agave montana, so they'll be fine in most winters in the UK. You don't need to do too much with them, but you can protect them with a perspex or polycarbonate sheet. Agave americana can be hardy once it's bigger, but once it, if it's small, I would bring this by the house or bring it indoors. It doesn't need to be heated at all, it just needs to be dry. If it's dry, same with cacti as well, they'll get through most winters because they can go down to minus 5, even minus 10, even lower in some cases as long as they're absolutely bone dry over winter. So stop watering them in September and let them dry out and they'll be fine in a cold greenhouse on the whole. Again, there's exceptions to everything I say because there's tender species and there's certain circumstances where things might not survive. Nothing's guaranteed. Tetrapanax is a fantastic plant, very architectural in the garden and for nearly all of us it is hardy so if you've got it planted in the ground don't worry about it, it'll get through winter. In exceptionally bad winters it might get cut back but it'll grow from the base, from suckers or from somewhere on the stem. So don't worry about protecting that too much really. Collocages, so collocages if you've got the hardy types like pink china they can be left in the ground you might want to put a straw mulch or some sort of covering over the ground just to protect it from the harshest frost. Otherwise, it'll get through fine anyway in most winters in most of the UK. Other types of collocasias, I would bring them in. If they are very small Hawaiian type ones, treat them as houseplants on a windowsill. If they've got a big sort of bulb, you can dry store them. I've done videos on that and I'll do a link in the corner for that as well. Palm trees, so for most palm trees that you grow, they're going to be hardy or hopefully you've chosen hardy types that are in the ground and they won't need any protection so Chachycarpus, Chemorops, Shamorops, whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce it will be fine in the garden. Bootiers are mostly fine down to minus six so if you're in an area where you might get colder than that you might lose it in a bad winter or you can protect it with, with fleece around the centre on the coldest nights but make sure you remove it when temperatures warm up so you don't get rot in the centre of your palm tree. The only sort of palm tree that a lot of people grow that is very borderline is Phoenix canari canariensis, the Canary Island date palm. If you grow that, hopefully you've planted it in a part of the country where it is hardy. If it's a borderline area where you're growing it, then you can tie up all the fronds with like cable ties or twine or something when it gets cold so lower than sort of minus four, minus five and you can put fleece around it just before snow comes to protect it from getting ice in the centre. Soon as the snowfall has passed and it's thawed out, get rid of that fleece and get the air around the plant. That's the best way to try to overwinter Phoenix canariensis. Any of these palms that you're growing in pots, you can bring them into a cold greenhouse and they'll be totally fine as long as it doesn't freeze through for weeks at a time. No need to put it in a warm greenhouse and waste energy and try to get them to grow over winter. You really want these to go pretty much dormant over winter. Dahlias, cannas, gingers, the best bet really if you want to save on space is to leave them in the ground and on the whole most will get through. Mulch them, grow them in an area where the soil drains well and they should get through 9 out of 10 winters for most of us in England and the UK. You can as a backup policy lift some of each type if you wish especially perhaps the cannas which are a little bit more tender than gingers on the whole and you can lift a few of these and you can either store them in sand or old compost or you can just dig up the clump put it in a bag and keep that somewhere frost free again you don't want it somewhere warm because you don't want it to go into growth 
um, and you don't need light really so you can go into a cupboard a cold room in your house a storage area into your attic anywhere like that where it's not going to get warm but it's not going to be frosty and again i've done videos on all these which i'll link in the description as well yuccas so yuccas that most of us grow will be hardy in the garden so you don't need to do too much with those you might want to put a rain shelter over them if they're small and the more rarer types but on the whole they're pretty hardy down to minus 10 at least so for most of us in most winters they'll be fine if you are growing yucca elephantitis this is half hardy maybe even tender for the variegated form so you'd really want to bring this again by the house or bring it inside into a, an area where it's not too warm and not too cold but a lot of people get away with having that plant out in the ground and it gets through it really depends on your location for that one any borderline tender plants or half hardy plants should i say for some people they will be hardy and for some people they will die and be tender it really depends on your location and your growing aspect and everything like that in terms of rainfall and frost as well now there's lots of the tender flowering things that i grow that look really good in summer and people ask how do i overwinter them so things like the climbing uh, glory vines We've got things like tophonias, Mexican sunflowers, we've got zinnias. And the answer to the question is all those are very tender and I grow them from seed every year. So I won't try to overwinter those plants. Same with ricinus, which you could overwinter because it is a perennial plant. You could overwinter it if you went to all the you know, time and effort of keeping it warm over winter. But grow that from seed every year. It makes a substantial plant and there's no point trying to overwinter those sort of plants, especially when the cost of energy is so high as it is at the moment. Now we move on to some more tender plants that we like to grow in the garden and these are sort of the summer bedding style plants so we've got some of the begonias, some are hardy but a lot are tender and we've got things like coleus or selenstormen, irisene as well and persian shield as well. So those tender plants really, these are plants where you're going to have to do a bit more effort because you do need to keep them in growth all year round. You can't let them go dormant and you can't put them in a cold greenhouse. So the best way of attack really to keep these over winter is to take cut-ins in September and October before the frosts come and then keep them on the windowsill in your house over winter. It needs to have good light really, so bright light and it needs to be warm, so over 15 degrees. So that's why I would sort of prioritize these. If you've only got a little bit of windowsill space I would prioritize the plants you like the most and the hardest to replenish next year the ones that you want to keep the certain varieties I would make sure I would take cuttings for those and put them on a windowsill and keep them growing over winter and they will make good plants next year you could dig up the main mother plants that have been out all summer and you could overwinter them as house plants but that's a bigger thing to do because you've obviously you've got all the soil to dig up and there might be bugs and creepy crawlers that a lot of people don't want on the windowsills whereas cuttings it's a nice clean cut you can root it in water quite easily and then you can pot it up in fresh compost and have it as a houseplant over winter tree ferns so dixonia antarctica like the lovely specimens all around me try to grow in a sheltered area in a garden i like to put straw in the centers to protect it and if it gets really really cold I will think about fleecing the whole plant as well while it stays really cold and then taking off that fleece when it warms up a bit. But nine times out of ten winters, straw in the crown is all they'll need. In mild winters, they'll keep the green leaves. If it gets to be a colder winter, they'll lose the leaves, but the growth point, the crown, will be fine with that straw protection and will unfurl new leaves in the spring. So that is not a plant you need to worry about digging up and bringing in. If you grow cyathias, for most people they'll grow them in pots and they do need to get frost free and you might want to think about putting them into a warmer greenhouse to keep them growing or a conservatory. But for most people we don't grow cyathias or we'll just have small potter plants which you can easily bring indoors. They can't be left outdoors really unless you're going to give them absolutely loads of protection or you live down in Cornwall a mile part of the UK. Cycad, Cycas revoluta, the most commonly grown cycad in the UK. That can be kept as a potted plant 
and brought into a shed or a greenhouse or to a garage. It doesn't really need any light over winter. It just doesn't want to completely freeze through for days at a time and it will get through. I've had mine when it was minus 10 outside. I've had it in a garage where it's not been quite as cold as that and it got through no problem whatsoever. Now I've got mine planted in the ground. If you've got yours planted in the ground, you do need to protect them. So I like to put fleece all the way around them, loads and loads of layers, and then do that sort of in November time, December time, and then unwrap it in sort of March time. And you'll find it won't really be bothered by being wrapped up for quite a long time and it should keep its leaves. If it's an exceptionally cold winter and it loses its leaves, the plant will be alive and it'll flush in the following spring. Aeoniums, fantastic plants, plants with the rosettes of leaves that look almost like green flowers or black flowers. They are on the whole tender, so they do need to be brought in over winter. They don't need to be kept super warm, but they do need to be kept frost free. So bring them in. A cold greenhouse can be fine for a lot of people in most winters. Ideally though, you're gonna need a bit of heat, so you might want to treat them as house plants, or you might want to just bring them close to the house where it is especially warm in the morning with the sunlight hitting the, the bricks and warming up that area. That might see them through if you haven't got space in the house. But ideally, yeah, you need to bring them in, keep them above five degrees. So Brugmansias or Angel's Trumpets, you would normally overwinter by keeping it warm in a warm conservatory or the warm greenhouse, but you can let it go dormant over winter and it'll come back fine. So the way to do this is basically strip all the leaves off or most of the leaves because it will drop them anyway if you don't do that. Cut back most of the tender or the newest growth of the stems. So it's got the old framework of more woody growth and then you can pretty much keep it dry. So dig it up or if it's in a pot, let it dry out bring it into a colder place, as in not a warm greenhouse. So again, the garage, the shed, or right next to the house where it's not going to completely freeze through. And you'll find that if it's kept really dry, then it will come through the winter well. Um, it will might be later into growth than when if you kept it obviously in a warm greenhouse, but nine times out of 10, most types of angels trumpets will survive with this method. Finally, if you've got house plants that you've planted out for summer bedding, obviously, as the name implies, they are house plants. You will need to dig them up, pot them back up and bring them in the house. You won't be able to get through most winters left in a cold greenhouse because they need that warmth. You need to be kept growing above 15, in some cases, 18 degrees. So really overwinter them indoors. So that can be anything from a peace lily to a monstera, anything like that needs to be warm over winter. So I've gone through a lot of plants really quickly in this video, just giving some basic pointers of how to overwinter them without spending too much warming up and heating a warm greenhouse. I, like I've said throughout this video, I've done individual videos on all these plants, which you can see in my overwintering playlist in the description below and on my channel. And there's lots more content on there and coming up, especially over winter. So thanks for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK. Join me next week where I'll be doing more in the garden.